Trish the Troll Once upon a time, at the top of a very tall block of flats, lived a girl called Trish. From her window, the little girl would look down upon the world and daydream that she had complete power over everyone. She would close one eye and hold her fingers up to the other. She would spot someone walking along 50 floors below. It might be an old lady walking her dog, a child playing with a ball, or a young mother hurrying home with her shopping. And whoever they were, Trish would get them in her sights and pretend that she was squishing them between her fingers. You're squished! And you, and you! She would say to herself, and a broad smile would spread across her face. I'll squish you all! Trish longed for some way of squishing people for real. The idea came, as good ones often do, while she was sitting on the toilet. It was break time at school and Trish was sat on the loo, staring up at all the graffiti that decorated the walls and door. There was barely a space that wasn't covered by some words or drawings. Some of the graffiti gave a news flash on the love lives of the teachers. Miss Trout loves Mrs. Puffruffrock. I saw Mr. Bonkers and Miss Boonarv sitting in a tree. K R S S R N G. Miss Birch has got the hots for Mr. Fumble. Other graffiti took the form of an alternative school report. Maths is boring. I hate history. Science sucks! There were quite a few harsh restaurant reviews of the school canteen. Do not eat the sausage rolls unless you want to die. You need to cut the custard with a knife. Bring back turkey Twizzlers. Trish wondered what it would feel like if she wrote something really nasty. Would that be like squishing someone for real? In her blazer pocket, the girl kept a thick felt-tip pen. She placed the lid in her mouth as she pondered what to write. The most popular girl in the school was Megan. Megan was always kind to the younger children, included all the other kids in games, and had a smile for everyone, even the grumpiest teachers, like Mr Bongers. Finally, Trish scribbled in big black letters. Megan's got bug breath. Megan didn't have bog breath, but it didn't matter. All that mattered to Trish was that once she had read it, Megan would feel well and truly squished. Trish left the cubicle and walked past the mirror. As she glanced at herself, she noticed something startling. A big wart had appeared on the end of her nose. What is this? muttered Trish to herself. It was very strange. She hadn't noticed anything when she'd left her flat this morning. The girl pulled her hair down to hide it and hurried off to her next lesson. By lunchtime, news had spread across the school like wildfire about what had been screwed on the toilet wall. Poor Megan was crying and being comforted by her friends. Trish lingered nearby, munching on a scotch egg so she could listen in. Bog breath? I don't have bog breath, do I? spluttered Megan through the tears. No! no! came a chorus of girls' voices. Then why would anyone wore, 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 write such a thing? I bet it's some saddo who gets a kick out of secretly being horrible, replied her best friend forever, Cheryl. I think they're called trolls, added a sporty boy called Paul, doing keepy-uppies. Who would want to upset you like that? asked Trish with a guilty smirk. You know, I think you're the nicest girl in the whole school. Thanks so much, replied Megan. A gust of wind blew Trisha's hair back, and Megan spotted the wart. It was very hard not to miss. Trish? asked Megan. Yeah? What's that thingy? What thingy? asked Trish, playing innocent. The thingy on your nose, replied Megan. Oh, oh, this tiny thing. It's just a little zit. Uh... It will be gone in the morning. But it hadn't gone in the morning. Trish woke up with a start and immediately felt her nose. No. She muttered to herself as she sat up in bed. The wall is still there. No matter. There was more squishing to do. The girl made sure that she was first past the school gates that morning. The place was deserted, perfect for what Trish had planned. She sneaked into the art room and snatched a pot of paint and a brush. 
From the shed, she helped herself to the caretaker's ladder. Checking first that she was still alone, Trish daubed the outside of the main school building with letters so huge they could be read from outer space. Cheryl has a massive bump. As she slid down the ladder, the girl could feel her ears burning. She reached up to touch them. Ow! They were flaming hot and growing at an alarming rate. Thick hairs started sprouting out of them. There was a puddle at her feet, so Trish peered at her reflection. Hello! Screamed the girl. She now had two ginormous furry ears that wouldn't have been out of place on a gorilla. Seeing the deputy headmistress, Miss Birch, trundle through the school gates in her motorised wheelchair, Trish hid behind the bike sheds. There, she waited for Cheryl to arrive. She couldn't wait to see her reaction. The poor girl burst into floods of tears as soon as she saw the writing on the wall. I don't have a massive bum, do I? She wailed. No, your bottom is small, replied Megan. Too small, demanded Cheryl. Nah, said Paul. Medium. Small medium or big medium? Medium, medium, replied the boy. Trish sniggered to herself. Another victim squished. Ding, ding, ding. The bell rang for the start of lessons. With her increasingly bizarre appearance, Trish wanted to wait until the coast was clear. As soon as the playground had emptied, the girls sneaked into the main school building. She paced along a deserted corridor on her way to her history lesson. Despite being late, she couldn't resist striking again. Trish pulled out her thick felt-tip pen and scrawled across the wall. Paul's got a pizza face. No sooner had she finished her poisonous prose than the girl noticed her hand had thick curly hair growing on it. Ah! She screamed. The girl checked her other hand. Before her very eyes, her hands were becoming claws, her fingernails transforming into spiky talons. What is happening to me? She cried. A classroom door swung open. Trish! Donking! Shouted Mr Bongers, the bald, bespectacled history teacher. What is all this shouting? Nothing, sir. And you're late. Sorry, sir. Get in here at once. Trish took a deep breath and walked towards her teacher. The girl pulled her hair down over her ears in the hope that she might hide them. Next, she bowed her head and yanked down the sleeves of her blazer so Mr Bongers might not see her wart or claws. She rushed past the teacher at the doorway and hid at the back of the classroom. So, where were we? Began Mr Bongers. The Vikings, sir, said Thomas, the cleverest boy in the class. Oh yes, thank you Thomas. The Vikings. Now the Vikings had their own special beliefs. Can anyone tell me what they believe in? <coughs> Elves, replied Thomas confidently. Well done, Thomas, said the teacher. That's right. Elves, go up on the board. What else? The boy was first to put up his hand again. Anyone other than Thomas? Asked Mr Bongers. Megan? Giants? Guessed the girl. Excellent. Giants go up on the board. Any other thoughts? Anyone other than Thomas? As the children in the class continued making suggestions, Trish pulled a drawing pen off a poster on the wall and started scratching words on her desk. It was time to do more squishing. She smirked as she etched the words. Thomas is a thicko. Just as she was rounding off the O of thicko, the girl felt a sharp pang of toothache. Ah! It hurt. Trish checked her reflection in the window. Her teeth were transforming into fangs. The girl looked so terrifying that she terrified herself. Her mouth widened in a silent scream. A troll! shouted Paul. Very good, Paul, said Mr Bongers. Put your hand up next time, but you are correct. The Vikings did indeed believe in trolls. No, sir. Look, a troll! exclaimed Paul, pointing frantically at Trish. All eyes turned back to the back of the class. 
<laughs> Scream the other children as Trish's blazer ripped and a thick back covered in fur exploded out. Next, the girl's shoes split open <laughs> and ten fat, dirty toes broke out. <laughs> Trish felt sick at the sight of them. The nails all black with goodness knows what. Tentatively, Mr Bongers approached this thing that was sitting in the classroom. Are you feeling all right, Trish? He asked. It just uh, you look like you've turned into some kind of, well, troll. I am not a troll, she growled. Trish's voice was suddenly deeper and darker than ever before. It was like listening to a hundred-year-old man who'd smoked a hundred cigarettes a day. Well, in fairness, Trish Duncan, you do look like a troll, replied the teacher. I'll bug off, you big nose baboon, she snarled. Cheryl and Megan shared a look. The two girls had worked it out. Trish must be the ones who's been writing all these nasty things, exclaimed Megan. Shut your face, Thunderfights! She's the troll, cried Cheryl. Trish the troll had been busted. She needed to get out of there, and fast. She dashed to the door, but found that she couldn't grip the handle with her claws. Stupid door! She thundered, ramming her shoulder up against it and smashing it off its hinges. Bang! The door slammed to the floor. Stop that troll! bellowed Mr Bongers. As the creature scuttled down the corridor, all the other classroom doors swung open and teachers and pupils swarmed out, eager to see who or what was causing the commotion. Soon there were hundreds of pupils and teachers giving chase. The one who looked most thrilled with it all was ancient Miss Birch. The deputy head was in hot pursuit, going full speed ahead on her motorised wheelchair. Follow me, children! Follow me! Miss Birch called out. The troll turned a corner in the corridor only to see that she was trapped. There were walls of people on either side of her. Watch out! I will bite! shouted the creature, baring her fangs. Just you try! replied Miss Birch with a smile. Charge! cried the old lady as she brandished her walking cane. The, her wheelchair was trundling at full speed straight towards Trish. In a desperate bid to escape, the troll leapt through the window <sharp inhale> before racing across the playground and out through the gates. Now the entire school was pursuing her. They were all shouting and soon passers-by were joining the chase. Get it! shouted the lollipop lady. Got it! yelled a traffic warden. Lock it up! called out a vicar. Trish darted past her block of flats. People would know to find her there, so she dashed through some woods at the back of the flats. Soon she found herself in a spooky old churchyard. Exhausted, the troll lay down beside a gravestone. This way, everyone! called out Miss Birch, leading the pack in her motorised wheelchair. I can smell it! The troll hid behind a tomb. The mob didn't spot her and soon passed through the churchyard to continue their search for the creature. Too full of fear to come out from her hiding place, the troll decided to stay put until nightfall. However, as soon as the sun went down, the mob flooded back into the churchyard, many brandishing flaming torches and pitchforks. The footprints end here, said Mr Bongers, now armed with a huge butterfly net. That means the creature must be hiding somewhere in the churchyard, replied Miss Birch, now armed with an antique musket. The flaming torches were shone all around the graves. Before long, one stopped on a big hairy foot, sticking out from behind a tomb. There it is! It's mine! called Miss Birch from her wheelchair as she raised her musket to take aim. There was nothing else to do. Trish made a run for it. <laughs> Shots rang out. Gunpowder lit up the sky. The troll scrambled through a hedge and tumbled down a steep bank before plunging it into a freezing river below. The mob looked on from above as the flow of water carried the creature off. Blast! cursed Miss Birch. I'm all out of gunpowder! After floating down river all night, the troll found herself being swept out to sea. Help! she screamed. Soon the land was a distant memory. Just as she thought the sea would take her, Trish spotted a tiny island. 
It was little more than a rock poking from the water. A wave smashed the troll into it. She clung onto the rock with her claws for dear life. With waves crashing around her, she just managed to heave herself up. The only shelter from the cruel sea was a cold, dark cave. Coughing and spluttering, Trish crawled into it. <coughs> that cave would become the troll's new home. It was a small. It was so small she couldn't even stand up straight. Oh no! cried Trish. I'm completely squished. Now she knew what it felt like. She passed the rest of her days all alone on that island. Trish the troll lived unhappily ever after. <laughs>